Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Here's an update what's going on there in Hawaii. I got a message from someone there that lives on the Big Island. I posted a reply. I tried to look for the reply. I don't see it. Um, hopefully they got it. But the research that I did um, today and what I was looking at last week has me a bit concerned. Uh, Mauna Loa is going to erupt when? I don't know. But if I lived there, I would have things ready um, just in case it decided to erupt without notice. Well, there is going to be a notice. There's going to be an increase in earthquakes and things like that. But I want to talk briefly about Mauna Loa. And then I'm going to go down here and talk about this uh, area. It's an undersea volcano that's been showing a lot of earthquakes. Here we have the intensity map. Um, this is all the earthquakes. Let's see. In the last 24 hours, a magnitude 2.5 or greater. 45 on this map today in the last 24 hours. And I was looking up the intensity level. Um, here we got Palahala. Intensity level 1. Now, Palahala um, is actually right there on the Big Island. They had one report that they felt the magnitude 3.8, which was from this undersea volcano. It's a new island that's going to eventually one day break through to the ocean, they say, maybe within the next 10,000 years. But see, Palahala is over here. Okay, right there. And this is the area where the magma comes up from the, the vent, the plume, to travel up to Mauna Loa. They are under an advisory for the Mauna Loa volcano um, of yellow. Um, they know that the magma has, has traveled to the upper magma chamber. And what has me concerned is a research paper published by USGS. It says some eruptions from Mauna Loa begin with only brief seismic unrest, although others follow several months to a year of increased seismicity. Once underway, an eruption sheds lava flows that may reach the sea in less than 24 hours, severing roads and utilities. Well, if uh, history has a way of repeating itself, and you think about the, the last eruption of the volcano there in Hawaii, at Kilauea, and all the problems, you know, Fisher 8, all the problems of all the people evacuating and trying to find places to stay, roads that were cut off, they had a lot of warning of what was coming. But there at Mauna Loa, it could erupt without any warning or at least with only a brief seismic unrest, a brief, very brief period of earthquakes. I was thinking about that movie, Dante's Peak, where no one would take the warning that the volcano was going to erupt, and yeah, lava bombs and heated waters, and I'm sure lots of you have seen that movie, Dante's Peak. This paper goes into the 1950 flow of the Southwest Rift Zone eruption, it advanced at an average rate of 9.6 kilometers per hour. It says, although the flows must have traveled much faster near the eruptive vents. The flows reached the ocean in approximately three hours from the beginning of the eruption. Think about bridges, um, earthquakes, you know, when they had the eruption there at Kilauea. You know, there was some large earthquakes. Uh, damage to buildings, uh, roads were separated, uplift, some subsided. Um, if the lava flowed from the volcano in just three hours and you're not prepared to run for your life um, with just basically the clothes on your back, um, you're certainly not going to be able to get animals or um, possessions out in time, right? They're evidently watching the volcano. It's at advisory yellow right now. Threat potential is very high. An earthquake that also occurred today 
this was an intensity level of 2, a 2.6. Again, that undersea volcano. Um, and it was reported to have been felt in Palahala. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Okay, my other concern is that we have magma that flows from Palahala all the way up to here to Mauna Loa. And I worry about the slump. Okay, the slump is made up of several layers. Uh, we got this mountain, we got cliffs, and then there's this plain, this flat area um, that they feel underneath this plain is a block zone that would prevent the side of this mountain from sliding into the ocean. But then you think about avalanches, okay? You have snow on top of ice. Same principle. You got several layers of rock. Um, some layers are uh, more stable than other layers. But once the upper layer of snow decides to slide across, that other layer of ice that is melting underneath and creates uh, an avalanche, there's no way to stop it. And that is my concern because of all these earthquakes that have begun to happen here at this underwater volcano that are being reported all the way over here in Palahala. On this paper, on a, I'll give you a link to this paper. They have a, an image of the Big Island. We got Mauna Loa. We got the Southwest Rift Zone. Yeah. This is a fissure. So can you imagine lava flowing from Mauna Loa and reaching Hilo in just three hours? Here we have all my details that I was mapping out the uh, eruption and the earthquakes that were occurring um, from Fissure 8 and uh, Kilauea. But what I'm looking for is roads and people that may live in this area and would have to evacuate. We got lava flows over here on the western side. How fast would the lava flow? Could it flow to that area? And we know it flowed all the way to Hilo. In fact, Hilo is built on past lava flows. What would be your evacuation route? Um, what kind of bridges? What kind of roads? Um, would you be cut off from evacuating if you had to evacuate, you know, really quick? And where will you stay? Remember the, all the problems about housing afterwards from Kilauea's eruption? And, you know, it's looking like Mauna Loa is going to have an eruption. There was one paper talking about the past and eruptions with uh, Mauna Loa that they had found that when Kilauea erupted, usually within 18 months, well, it's been longer than 18 months, but uh, Mauna Loa um, would erupt. Well, it's been showing activity for quite a while. Yeah, these are from what? Earthquakes that I was tracking. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, 2018. Oh, in fact, it was uh, May 10th. Yeah, things, you know, so it's it's been recharging for a while. The last eruption was in 1984. Summit activity was less um, than one day. Flank activity, 22 days. Eruptive area of volcano, south and northeast. Most of them, it looks like, was in the northeast. And how close the lava came to Hilo Bay. And I'm sure many of you have heard about the bomb when they tried to bomb the lava flows to stop it. Um, yeah, they recently found an unexploded bomb that they dropped in 1935. That's, that's on here too. They actually believe that bombing the lava flows um, had stopped or slowed down the event, but now they know that was not the case. It didn't work. There at the top of Mauna Loa, yeah, the earthquakes are getting shallower. I remember when I first started um, learning about volcanoes, when um, 
when that volcano um, before it erupted there in the Canary Islands, I knew within about two weeks because they were giving us live gas readings that it was going to go. And luckily that volcano erupted um, off the uh, north, oh, kind of, no, the southeast side under the water of the volcano. Luckily that happened. But that started my quest for knowledge to learn about volcanoes and how they work and the triggering event, etc. But um, going back to that, to make a long story short, they knew that once the earthquakes got to be less than 5 kilometers in depth, which is about 3.1 miles in depth, um, they were going to evacuate. So that's always been something I look at when um, earthquakes are less than um, 5 kilometers in depth. Now these earthquakes, you can see, we got minus 0 0.9 kilometers. This is the summit. 0 0.7 kilometers, 2.4 kilometers, 1.6 kilometers. Yeah, they're definitely less than 5 kilometers in depth. And of course, that's why the advisory level has been risen to yellow. Yeah, they're keeping a close eye on it. These earthquakes are right along that rift zone. Can you see that? I'm going to, oh, if I zoom in, it takes it out there. See that? And then the earthquakes down here, they're deeper. See the magma? It's called magma. When the lava is still under the ground, it travels up from here all the way up to the summit there at the volcano. They're deep. You know, 31.6 kilometers. It's coming up from the plume. But they know because of deformation that the magma has reached the upper chamber of this volcano. And then my other concern is all these earthquakes for this undersea volcano, which will be a new island, maybe in a, about 10,000 years, creating a landslide of the uh, slump over here. Yeah, that's another concern of mine. So anyways, that's all I have for you about that right now. I'll give you a link to that paper. You can read the information. Um, yeah, everyone should always be prepared just in case. I'm probably one of the people that um, is a hoarder in a sense when it comes to being prepared for food and water and um, my little cat carriers and things like that. Yeah, you don't want to be caught in a situation like Dante's Peak. Well, yeah, we're seeing a lot of things right now that never thought would happen such as the local pandemic of the coronavirus that's like a movie in slow motion um so many thoughts or comments or questions yeah put it down below thank you for your support please stay safe always be prepared for a disaster and i will talk to you later god bless y'all bye